The Japanese government is stepping up the emergency response to Monday's earthquake, which is now known to have killed 62 people. This is the city of Wajima. This really is the heart of the devastation. We're learning a 7.6 magnitude earthquake has struck Japan. New Year's Day, a momentous occasion marked by joyous celebrations and the promise of new beginnings, kicked off with an eerie twist for Japan. For them, their world was shaken. As the sun rose on the first day of the year, a scene of destruction unfolded across central Japan, casting a shadow over the beginning of 2024. Japan has once again been hit by a tremendous earthquake that triggered a tsunami wave, destroying everything in its wake. Join us as we delve into the earthquake and tsunami damage in Japan. Japan's New Year's disaster. Recent footage from above has shown the serious impacts of a big earthquake with a magnitude of 7.6 that hit central Japan on Monday, January 1st. The footage shows a lot of damage in Wajima, Ishikawa Prefecture, on the northern coast of the Noto Peninsula, one of the hardest hit areas. The remains of buildings are on fire and the town, which used to be thriving, now has visible scars from fire damage. Moving east along the peninsula, Suzu is revealed, with a harbor and surrounding structures dealing with the aftermath of a tsunami. In the footage, there's a fishing boat hanging in midair from a jetty, a sad sign of the strong force from the earthquake. On Monday, the Japan Meteorological Agency warned of a big tsunami for Ishikawa and smaller warnings for the western coast of Honshu and Hokkaido. The effects were quick and severe, with buildings collapsing, fires starting, and tsunami alerts reaching as far as eastern Russia. The warning was lowered by Monday evening, and by early Tuesday, all tsunami alerts were lifted. But the coastal areas still showed signs of damage, muddy shorelines and partially sunk ships. Under Japan's tsunami warning system, waves expected to be less than one meter fall under a tsunami advisory, while those expected to be up to three meters fall under a tsunami warning and waves above five meters fall under a major tsunami warning. The first waves hit the coast just over 10 minutes after the quake. People who had to leave their homes sought shelter in auditoriums, schools, and community centers. Trains and highways were stopped. According to the power company Hokuriku Electric Power, over 45,000 households in Ishikawa were affected with over 30,000 seeking refuge in evacuation centers. On Tuesday, the fire department in Wajima City reported that about 200 buildings were believed to have burned down on Asaichi Street, a popular tourist area in Wajima, in a fire that broke out Monday, NHK reported. According to government officials, Wajima City, Shika Town, and Anamizu Town were hit the hardest with 25 collapsed buildings in Wajima City alone and 14 possibly having people still trapped inside. With the landscapes in ruins, a major concern is the weather forecast, which predicts rain, adding to worries about crumbling buildings and damaged infrastructure. The region, known for its tourist spots and cultural heritage sites, faces an uncertain future. The human toll is 62 confirmed to have met their ends, with 29 in Wajima City and 22 in Suzu, according to Ishikawa Prefectural Authorities. Noto Airport, damaged by the quake, left around 500 people stranded. They were given food and blankets, but could not leave due to damaged roads, adding that the airport will be closed until at least Thursday. The number of missing people is still unknown, as authorities continue searching for those trapped in isolated areas. Earlier, the city saw tsunami waves of around 3.9 feet, according to NHK. Four high-speed trains stopped in their fast travels when the earthquake hit, trapping almost 1,400 passengers inside for around 11 hours and started running again on Tuesday morning. This information comes from NHK, citing Japan Railways West. 
These high-speed trains were stuck between the central cities of Toyama and Kanazawa after the 7.6 magnitude tremor. Rescue efforts are ongoing, with aftershocks still happening for two days. The army has been sent to the peninsula to save those possibly trapped within the crucial first 72 hours after the disaster. Quick public warnings and responses have somewhat limited the damage. According to the United States Geological Survey, around 35 smaller aftershocks were reported near the earthquake's epicenter. Susan Hof, a seismologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, cautioned that aftershocks could persist for months. She mentioned that people in that region have encountered earthquakes before, but this one is considered the biggest. This suggests that most residents likely do not have experience with a seismic event of this magnitude. How emphasized that an earthquake this big will continue to have aftershocks. It could easily have aftershocks bigger than magnitude 6, which will be a hazard in its own right. A sad turn in this story happened when a plane sent for aid crashed on the runway in Tokyo. Emergency chutes ensured the safety of all 379 people on board a Japan Airlines Airbus A350. However, a de Havilland Dash 8 Coast Guard turboprop collided, claiming the lives of five of its six crew members. After a disaster emergency meeting, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida told reporters about the challenges in reaching the worst affected areas due to damage and blockages on the Noto Peninsula's roads. He further explains that to secure the route there, they would mobilize all the means of transport on the ground and by aerial and marine transport. They have been trying to transfer goods, supplies, and personnel there since last night. An older man, rescued from a house that fell during the earthquake, was later reported to have passed away, as stated by NHK, referring to the police in Ishikawa. Health officials in Suzu City mentioned that certain doctors couldn't care for injured patients because the damaged roads prevented them from commuting to work. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority reported no problems at power plants along the Sea of Japan, including five active reactors at Kansai Electric Power's Ohi and Takahama plants in Fukui Prefecture. Hokuriku's Shika plant in Ishikawa located closest to its epicenter, had already stopped its two reactors before the quake for regular inspection and saw no impact. The earthquake revealed vulnerabilities in remote areas, where old wooden houses, still under repair from past seismic events, suffered the most from nature's fury. While officials warned against complacency and the possibility of more earthquakes, Japan's resilience faces a complex challenge as the nation deals not only with the immediate aftermath, but also with the potential for future tremors, testing the strength of communities and the effectiveness of disaster preparedness measures. Even though Japan is familiar with earthquakes and has strict building codes to withstand them, the recent damage is still substantial, and the extent of the damage from Monday's earthquake is still being assessed. However, it is considerably less severe than the destruction caused by the 2011 earthquake, with a magnitude of 9.0, whose impact still affects the region today. Previous Earthquake Earthquakes often hit Japan, and its vulnerability to these disasters has impacted its history. A significant example happened on March 11, 2011, when a huge 9.1 earthquake hit 231 miles northeast of Tokyo. This event triggered a powerful tsunami with waves as high as 30 feet. The incident began with a strong earthquake off the northeastern coast of Honshu, Japan's main island, causing widespread damage on land and leading to large tsunami waves that devastated many coastal areas, especially in the Tohoku region of northeastern Honshu. The consequences of this earthquake were severe, resulting in the loss of almost 20,000 lives, the destruction of towns, and nuclear meltdowns in Fukushima. This earthquake remains the largest ever recorded in Japan, surpassing even the recent New Year's Day earthquake, the most significant since 2011. The center of the March 11th disaster was located 80 miles east of Sendai, Miyagi Prefecture, and resulted from the rupture of the subduction zone associated with the Japan Trench. 
This rupture spanned approximately 190 miles by 95 miles, displacing the land horizontally by as much as 164 feet and thrusting upward by about 33 feet. The seismic shock waves were felt as far away as Russia, Taiwan, and China, making it one of the most powerful earthquakes in recorded history. The force of the Pacific Plate Moving under the Eurasian plate near Japan, displaced water, causing devastating tsunami waves. These waves, some reaching a staggering 33 feet in height, flooded coastal areas, including Sendai, leaving large stretches of land underwater. The destruction extended beyond the immediate impact zones, with tsunami warnings reaching the Pacific Basin and waves reaching the coasts of Hawaii, California, Oregon, and Antarctica. According to some reports, a wave reached about 10 kilometers inland after causing the Natori River to overflow. Damaging tsunami waves affected the coasts of Iwate Prefecture, just north of Miyagi Prefecture, and Fukushima, Ibaraki, and Chiba, extending along the Pacific coast south of Miyagi. Other communities severely affected by the tsunami included Kamaishi and Miyako in Iwate, Ishinomaki, Kesenuma, Shiogama in Miyagi, and Kitabaraki and Hitachinaka in Ibaraki. As the floodwaters receded into the sea, they carried along significant amounts of debris, and thousands of victims were caught in the deluge. Large areas of land were left underwater, particularly in lower-lying areas. The aftermath was catastrophic, with initial reports estimating hundreds of casualties. As the extent of the devastation became clear, the fatal toll surpassed 10,000 within two weeks, making it one of Japan's deadliest natural disasters. Coastal cities and towns were submerged and farmlands were inundated, leaving behind a trail of destruction and debris. Initial reports of casualties following the tsunami indicated that the toll was in the hundreds, with hundreds more reported as missing. In the days that followed, these numbers increased significantly as the full extent of the devastation, particularly in coastal areas, became apparent and rescue operations began. Within two weeks, the official count of people who passed away by the Japanese government surpassed 10,000, and more than one and a half times that number were still listed as missing and presumed dead it became evident that the earthquake and tsunami were among the deadliest natural disasters in Japanese history, comparable to the major earthquake and tsunami off the coast of Iwate Prefecture in June 1896. As the search for victims continued, the official count of those confirmed dead or still missing rose to about 28,500. However, as more people initially thought to be missing were found alive, that figure decreased reaching around 19,300 by the end of 2011. Coastal cities, towns, and extensive farmland in the tsunami's path were submerged by swirling waters that carried away numerous houses, boats, cars, trucks, and debris. The extent of the destruction revealed how many thousands of people were missing, including cases where half or more of a community's population was unaccounted for. Some of the initially missing individuals were on a ship washed away by the tsunami, and passengers on several trains in Iwati and Miyagi prefectures were reported missing. However, the ship was later found with the people on board rescued, and all trains were located. Ultimately, the official total for the number of confirmed dead or missing from the disaster was about 18,500, although other estimates put the final toll at least 20,000. Fewer than 100 were from prefectures other than Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima. Miyagi Prefecture suffered the greatest losses, with approximately 10,800 passed away, or missing, and another 4,100 injured. The majority of those fatalities were victims of drowning caused by the tsunami waves, and more than half of the victims were aged 65 years or older. Amidst the chaos, the earthquake triggered a major nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power station. The ensuing, the nuclear emergency, reaching the highest severity level 7, 
paralleled the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. Concerns over radiation exposure led to evacuations and the establishment of no-fly zones around the facility. The impact reverberated globally with heightened levels of radiation detected in food and water supplies. In the face of adversity, a massive international response unfolded. Japanese Prime Minister Kan Naoto swiftly established an emergency command center deploying rescue workers and the self-defense force. Global solidarity manifested as countries, including the United States, China, and India, sent search and rescue teams, while international organizations like the Red Cross pledged support. The rescue efforts, hampered by logistical challenges and inclement weather, revealed the scale of the destruction. Hundreds of thousands sought refuge in shelters, grappling with limited supplies, as tens of thousands remained stranded. The journey toward recovery could have been faster, with displaced residents living in temporary housing units and the economic resurgence of the affected region faced numerous hurdles. As Japan continues to rebuild, the indomitable spirit of resilience prevails. The scars of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami serve as a testament to the nation's strength in the face of adversity, fostering a collective determination to forge ahead despite the challenges that linger in the wake of that fateful day. It's unfortunate to hear about the tragic experiences that have affected Japan during what should have been a time of celebration. Our thoughts go out to the people of Japan and those affected by these events. It's important to come together and support those in need like these. Our all new Cosmos Tough Samsung cases are available by clicking on your screen or checking the first link in the description. It's important to remember that they are just material possessions and cannot compare to the importance of human life and well-being. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos.